Um, good day to you. My name is Tony. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how to set up a, a dust cover or dust jacket for um, a hard uh, cover book um, in Open Office. Um, I've seen tutorials that show people how to do ordinary book covers, but the the dust jacket's just slightly different. It's you need an extra two columns either side to create the flaps that go around the end of the cardboard cover. So what you do is open up a text document, um, you right click on it and go down to page and then that comes up, you go to page. Now the leaf leaflet that goes around the end of the cover I'm going to set to 3 inches. So if you take the 3 inch front leaf, the 3 inch back cover leaf uh, as 3 inches each, that's 6 inches. And then your book, let's say it's 9 by 6, you'll have two lots of 6 for front cover, back front cover. So that's 18 inches. Let's assume a spine of half an inch, that's 18.5. And then two little delineation marks. Um, I'll show you where to put them to show you where the flaps end and the covers start. Let's put that at 0.1. So we are looking at 18.6 width. But before you enter those dimensions, go to landscape. The height of your book is 9 inches. The width is 18.6. That's not cast in stone. You can fiddle around with it a little bit while you're doing this. Okay. Down here, get rid of all the uh, margins. I apologize for this being in vertical mode, this um, tutorial. I did film it in landscape, but when I uploaded it, it took an hour to upload. It came out vertical. So that's that's what, you've, what I've done there. We then go to borders. That little warning <clears throat> sign will come up. Just click yes. We go to borders. Go up to no borders. Change the background to white. And then we go up here, click that there, which will give you that type of border arrangement. Well, it's not really a border. And the style, no shadows, in case you do put a border in. It gets a bit confusing with shadows. So that's what we do there. These uh, dimensions on the right here, I'll just return them to zero. Okay, so they're all zero. We go to columns, because we want... Four columns, back flap, back cover, a spine, front cover. Well, it's actually four columns creating five spaces. So we go here and we turn it up to four. You will see that these are cells are not active. So get, get rid of auto width. You'll now see that they're active. That's page one. That's page two. That's page three. Click on the right button. That's page four. And you can see them up here. Okay, so let's go back to page one. It's not actually the page, it's the the little leaf leaf that goes around the corner of your hardcover. So that was three inches. Then between pages one and two, you want to show where the the spine ends. But we can we can uh, leave that at uh, 0.05, just just to show a little line. On, on the screen when you're working. Then your back cover is 6 as we agreed. Then here is your spine which is between 2 and 3. There's 2, there's 3. That will be your spine. So we agreed half an inch there. Uh, we want 6 inches for page 3 which is the front of the book now. Front cover. And the back we want 3. Sometimes it goes to 305 like that. I've yet to figure out why. But the most crucial settings is that one, that one, and that one. That's your back cover, front cover, and your spine. You can get your spine thickness off um, a little tool on the internet. Just put in the, the type of paper and the number of pages, and it'll give you the give you the spine width. Um, always do that in inches, not in millimeters. It gets very confusing. So that's all okay. Um, uh, 
just double check everything again. Yeah, 666, six, six, that's fine. Beautiful, right, there we go. That's what it looks like in reality. You've got the back leaf there, you've got the back cover there, you've got the spine, you've got the front cover, and the front leaf. So to put in a, a photograph, just click anywhere on, on the screen, on the page. Go to insert at the top, up here, go to insert. Uh, bring down a picture. All your pictures must be 300 dpi and CMYK. Um, otherwise, they will not print. That's if you're going to print a book, the photographs must be CMYK. YK at 300 dpi or above. Okay, so you'll notice that the photograph I've selected is going to show there. It will remain fixed on that left frame unless you unfix it. Okay, so you right click on it, you go to anchor and click it to page. You can now take it to any page you want to. If you hold the shift key down, you can size it in proportion. Okay, otherwise it is not very good. Now on the center there, you see it going up to the spine. That's important that that photograph doesn't go over there. On the right hand side here, it can go slightly over the spine. This, uh, not spine, but this leaf, this jacket. Let it wrap around slightly so the photograph goes around the cardboard a little bit. That doesn't matter. Take it right to the top, right down to the bottom. Okay, so you've got a 300 dpi photograph in CMYK print, printing uh, parameters. You've got, got that side just over your, your front leaf margin, okay. And um, what we do now is right click on it, go to arrange, and send the photograph to the background. Okay, otherwise any print you put on it, uh, the photograph will drown it out. So go down here to T in the bottom area here. That will give you your text. Put your text on. Don't go down where it's going to be cut off by the, the printer and the bleed area at the bottom there. And you can now type in any type of format over there on the right. Okay, I'm going to put Times New Roman. I'm going to put it in italics because I want to show you something. We need a fairly big uh, font size. So I'll say this book is about dogs. Okay, if I make spelling mistakes, I'm just going to ignore them because this is going to take two gigabytes to upload by Joe Dogs. Okay. That bit and that bit must not be in italics, if you know what I'm saying. Only the heading should be in the, in the type of font that you want. Scrolly, squarey, Times New Roman, whatever. Whatever goes under it should be in different font. Okay, so that, that is there. If you click away from that, you'll now see that that writing is there. You can only just see it because um, if you want to go back and change the... The color of the font, you can do that. Um, let's let's make it white because that's um, probably stand up a little bit more. I don't know. Okay, so that's done. Um, you do exactly the same thing on on the back page here. Okay, you have to click anywhere on the four pages to make the whole four pages active. Then you go to insert, bring in another picture. I'm just going to use the same one uh, which was done by a, uh, a book I published. Done. Okay. Open it. It'll come up here in the left hand corner. Okay, you don't want it to be anchored there. Right click on it, and anchor to page. Always goes to the center. Get it there, hold shift. Spread it to the size you want. 
see it's going close to the, the spine again, so stop at the spine, take your finger off shift down to the bottom, up to the top, the left hand side just check where that leaf line is and go slightly over it. Okay. Now that's your spine. Uh, so click on this picture you've just loaded, arrange, send it to the back. Okay, click anywhere on the four to bring them all active again. Go back to insert. I'm going to bring in a logo. Okay. And that's uh, a logo that I use on my books. It'll come up here. Right. Okay, right click to un anchor it. It goes over there. Bring it down to where you want it. Hold shift to reduce it to the size that you want for your logo. That's your logo. Click anywhere in the open frame again. Another insert. I'm going to go back and get my barcode. Barcode. You get barcodes from Nielsen, N-I-E-L-S-E-N. -E -E okay, that's my barcode. Right click to free it up. Press the center, drag it down. That's my barcode. Okay, that, and then you can write some splurb up, up here by going to T. Uh, you know, this is the best. Uh, this is the best book in the universe. You see, obviously, you use a uh, big font, and that's there. Okay, you can put the font into any color you like. Now, what about the spine? How do you do the spine? Okay, you go go to T down below, get your your goodie and right in here uh, do space 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 first say so space space uh, let's go to 14 front just as an example uh, book about dogs space 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 by Joe blogs okay you click outside of that Let me just do that again. Right. Ah, I'm being silly. Put it there. Right there, well. You write something in there. And then you... Uh, go down here, down to the bottom, while those markers are available, you go down here to that little pos sign, okay, and that little icon will come up. Uh, if that, is a, that comes up there like that. You click on that, and you rotate it 270 degrees. You can see it's now like that. You can then take that over. Well, you've got to right-click it to free it being anchored. Um, so you can now take it onto there. Adjust your spines. Okay, if you want to fill that in with a color, go over to here on the right, put color, let's just pick a gray, and you can extend that downwards now. You can even put another little spinal logo there, and 
so that's that done. Okay, on the front leaf here, you can just um, put in some text. If the text starts getting too close to the edge of the leaf, you can use all your indent buttons over here to get it right. You can put color in it again. Um, and, you know, like I did here. Uh, that's the front cover is just a splurb about the book. That is a splurb about the author with the photograph here. So if you want to bring a photograph in of the author, um, I'll just use my granddaughter. That comes up there. Okay. Uh, Unanchor it. Goes to the middle. Bring the author picture down there. Hold down shift. Reduce it. I didn't hold shift because I'm holding the camera. But you know what I'm doing here. And then that's your author, and you can write some splurb up there. That's your author there, a little baby. Write some splurb up there, and that's it basically. You've uh, created a, a jacket. And then when you save it, um, it will come out of there, click below. It will actually show you where the, the spines are up here. You've got to make sure that that photograph's not going too far into the spine, which it is here, so I'll move it over just a fraction. Okay, that, that's more or less it. you you just got to fiddle. You'll see that this writing is too far over to the side of the spine, so you go over to, you double click on it, doesn't matter if it goes horizontal again, and you use this little goodie here. That'll center it. And then you double click up here. It goes back. And you can see the writings in the middle of the spine now. I'm sorry for this terrible tutorial done in vertical, and but I hope you get the gist of it. Uh, send me some questions and I'll I'll look at them and see if I can help you. Okay, thanks. Bye. And remember, photographs, 300 dpi minimum, including your logos and everything, your pictures of your 300 dpi uh, in CMYK properties. Okay, thank you. Bye.